Hey everybody, welcome back to Techno Babylon. The uh, music in the background, don't know if you can hear it. It uh, it's it's getting this this video copyright uh, demonetized. Not not a copyright strike, but a demonetization because because of that piano tune. All right, so I had a bit of a think in the shower this morning. As I tend to do have the, the best thoughts in the shower. Um, so we know that in this bathroom, there's that dark tunnel. We know that these fish are in fact luminous. And that they are aggressive. Uh, please do not touch the glass. They are aggressive and startle easily. These fish are not a menu item. So we have this jar... I mean, we have the toilet cleaner. I don't know what we're doing with that. But we have a jar that we could put luminous fish in. Then they would act like a lantern. If we can catch them. I tried to catch them before, but he said they were too quick. So, I've tried using this bone saw on a lot of things. I wonder if I could use this bone saw on a body to get some bait for the fish. Oh, here goes. You carve a slice from the cadaver, the nausea welling up reminds you why you went into into genetic medicine rather than the macro scale. Picked up slice of meat. Okay, can we put the slice of meat in the jar? You stuff the slice of meat into the open bottle. Good. I think we're getting somewhere. I think my, uh, my shower epiphany might have paid off. Though I still wonder if we kind of broke the sequence by getting that blood first in the dark. With the bait in place, the fish eagerly crowd around the bottle. When one adventurous soul takes the plunge, you hoist him from the water within the jar. Gotcha. All right, we got one luminous fish. I've caught a glowing fish. It'd probably look more impressive in a darker room. All right, let's go into a darker room. Let's take the lamp with us. Into the vent. All right, let's apply the jar to the darkness. Ah, oh, there's a bag. We weren't able to see that bag before. The vent cover's been unlatched from the inside. The bomber must have gained entry through here. Whoever their accomplice on the inside was did a number on their hand. The vent's cover's got a sharp edge and is still wet with blood. Yeah, I think I did kind of sequence break that a little bit. Um, because we were able to get to the blood without uh, actually seeing the blood. But now we can see this bag. A frayed cloth rucksack is bundled against the wall. It's covered in sewn-on patches of Christian iconography. Christian iconography. That could be the uh, the bomber. We know the bomber has some uh, kind of like religious affiliations from previous episodes. The bomber's bag. Likely the u this used to contain supplies to aid the bomber in remaining undercover in this city of heathens. Now the only thing remaining is a handwritten note. Picked up note to bomber. So he cut his hand here. We know that in the bathroom we found a first aid kit that didn't have anything in it because it had already been used. So what's this note? A crumpled note found in the bomber's possessions. Apparently from whoever hired him. It says... The time has come tonight. 2200 at 1181 Shenley, surface entrance C on the roof. Will open for you from inside. GBWU. Who's GBWU? Councilman Dean's not GBWU. Ron Schumann's not GBWU. Who's G? BWU. G B W U. I don't know what that means. Um can I show it to people? Hey, have you seen this note? Do you know GBWU? What do you make of this? 
Please address all exigent queries to Mr. Stepford. Yeah, well, I don't want to. I want to ask the uh, kitchen staff first. Because I feel like the kitchen staff didn't do it. I'm not sure what I was thinking. Well, I'm not sure what you're thinking either. I mean, I know what I was thinking. I don't know what you're thinking, Dr. Regis. All right. Stepford, Ron Schumann, Councilman. DBWU is not Imogen. Not She didn't accidentally kill herself. What do you make of this, Nina? Hey, the bomber's instructions. Where'd you find this? A vent access by the bathroom. They'd apparently been in communication beforehand. Good job, Charlie. This may help us find out who let them in. Yeah, you're supposed to tell me. That's why I came to you. Stepford, what do you know about GBWU? What do you think of this, Mr. Stepford? Oh my, a note to the bomber. Perhaps whomever sent it had data security in mind, yes. One certainly can't hack a letter after all. Okay, so you just don't know who that is? Can I ask you? Do you know GBWU? Nina. Charlie, how can I help? This plot of... That's not what I wanted to know. Let's change. That's all. Get me informed. Mr. Stepford, can I have a moment? Oh my, yes. I'll get back to you. <laughs> well, oh my, yes. Can I have a moment? Yeah, never mind. I don't want a moment. Dr. Regis, how can I help? I've discovered how the bomber managed to get into the restaurant. Apparently, someone here let them in through the vent in the bathroom. A sound approach. They could enter unseen if they did it before Mr. Stepford's men arrived. Whoever opened it did a number on their hand. Left a lot of blood. You wish to check my hands, Dr. Regis? Nah. Whoever it was will have slapped on a medipatch. Any visible injury will be gone in ten minutes. How unfortunate. I'll get back to you, Counselor. Anything I can do to help, Dr. Regis? Can I pour toilet cleaner on people? I'm not sure what... Hmm. I'm not sure what... Hmm. The toilet cleaner's got to do something. Just don't know Mr. yet. Mr. Ron. What you want? I'll get back to you. <laughs> Stop wasting my time. All right. Can I show him the note? I mean, it would be stupid to show the note to a suspect, right? What do you make of this, Mr. Ron? What did it say? You can't read English? English second language. I got secretary for that. You don't say. Well, oh, Dr. Regis, might I have a word in private? No, because you're the bomber. We're Cause... alone? As alone as we're going to get. What do you want? Your investigation is drawing to an end, is it not? Uh, no, it's definitely not. I still don't know who it is. I gotta go, sir. There still leads to chase up. Why? You are, without a doubt, a skilled detective, Dr. Regis. I am proud that the city employs only the finest. I believe that your inquiry will find only one credible suspect, myself. You're going to plead your innocence? Tell me it's a mistake? Not at all. You see, I am indeed responsible for the attack. Um, you lied to us? You almost killed us? Um, first of all, how could you have lied with the... With the thing in your head, right? You lied to us. The governor's a fake then. I'm sure your voters would love to find that out. The governor is working as well as it ever has. I have not once lied to you, Dr. Regis. I asked you if you hired the bomber. I did not. My assistant hired the bomber at my request. Oh, that's crap and you'd know it. People have to phrase their questions to me very carefully. You'd better have a real good reason for all this. For various values of good. You recall Gil Vanderwall? Um, of course. What's he got to do with this? Well, of course I remember. Of course. Things have gone downhill since he got involved in my case. Two years ago, much to my shame, I did something terrible. I took part in a vote-fixing program for the Cosmopolitan Party, and they promised me this office in the next election. Gil discovered this and has been blackmailing me ever since. But why the suicide bomber? He realized that Nina's project might lead to his death. He was a spiteful man, and he needed a guarantee that he could strike back against her if that happened. From beyond the grave. Essentially, I was his guarantee. He wanted you to kill Nina for him? Or materials he has on me would be released to the public. My career, my family would be ruined. I don't care about so that. So instead of turning you in, I should... Tell them that Ron Schumann was responsible. No. What? Frame an innocent man? You've spoken to him, Dr. Regis. 
He is a truly, objectively despicable individual. You're one to talk. What I've done was terrible, but I wish to make reparations for what I've done. After this is done, I shall devote my life's work to annihilating corruption in our city. Ron wishes no more than to desecrate and pollute our nation as he has done his own. Um, yeah, but... He may be guilty of those other things, but he's not guilty of this. You are, sir. And, uh... I can't just let that go. You nearly killed us all. You might be the lesser of two evils. I mean, yes, but... We're prosecuting this particular case. Not the case of anything that Ron Schumann has done. You nearly killed us. You nearly killed us all with that bomber. I apologize most sincerely for that, Dr. Regis. Had I known someone such as yourself would be present, I would have found other means. Please, consider what this means for the city. No, you're going to jail. Charlie, what have you found? I've completed my investigation. That was most swift. Though effective, I've no doubt. Who tried to kill us? After finding enough evidence to exclude all other parties. Counselor Dean did it. Ron Schumann did it. Nope. Count yourself lucky today, Mr. Ron. Counselor Dean. The only conclusion possible is that Counselor Dean is responsible. What? My word. Okay. Andrew, is this true? See? He not say anything. Otherwise, he have to tell true. Ron Schumann's yes. probably going to shoot him yes. right now. I am responsible. I acted to save my family from my mistakes. I joined this project to protect the city that I love. The rest of you are backstabbing cowards. Out to loot Newton for your own gain. I'm sorry you feel that way, Counselor. That leaves us only one option, I'm afraid. Liam. Oh, they're going to throw him out the window. They're going to throw him right out the window. What? He's... What are you doing? He's gone. Wait, stop! <laughs> Poor dear Counselor Dean. Tragically thrown from the building by the blast. This is... You're completely insane. We're doing what we have to, Charlie. As promised, the information you require. The man who has your kids, your mind jacker, is a contractor, Jayam Kressel. He's based out of an aerostat currently moored at the Xanadu dockyard. You haven't changed one bit, Nina. I hope you find what you're looking for, Charlie. Remember, I'm always here if you need my help. Well, what a jerk. The uptake reports came in. Looks like there was a 99.1% volume of new code in the embryo. Oh, that's fantastic. We'll have a viable specimen for testing within days. Yeah, and it wouldn't have had the same kind of uptake if it was one of the brain-dead ones. So, how did you manage to score these full-scope human embryos? Um, they're mine? That's not your concern. Um, they're mine. It would have taken months to get approval from the city council, so we used our own. Yours? You and Charlie? They're healthy, and they got all the right uptake markers. Oh, I'm just kind of surprised Charlie agreed to it, given his previous line of work and Let all. Let me guess, he didn't. He you didn't. have told him, haven't you? I was going to find a way. That explains why he's on the warpath, then. Oh, nuke me. How did he find out? Vicky! Uh-oh. You better leave, uh, <laughs> Gwen. You better get Dr. out of there. Chigua, may I speak to my wife? Charlie, you better not- Get out! Dr. Baxter just congratulated me on what a noble gesture I was making for science. Apparently, we volunteered our own embryos for gingineering. Calm down, Charlie. Sorry I didn't tell you. Um... Calm down, Charlie's probably not gonna go over very well. I mean, normally when people are upset, telling them to calm down is more... Like, it pushes their buttons more than actually lets them calm down. So, let's start with a... Let's start with an apology. I'm sorry I hadn't told you yet. Dr. Vargas was having enough trouble stalling the council. We needed to start showing results, so I made the decision for both of us. You didn't think I'd object if I knew beforehand? Well, no. Using our own embryos was the right thing to do to keep the project afloat. You have no idea what I'm upset about. Sure I do. You're mad because I didn't consult you? You're being old-fashioned. We've always got more. They won't be born. I mean, I think he's mad because... Well, it could be just because they won't be born. But it could be more that he spent his earlier life 
being forced to genetically modify kids and this is kind of he was getting away with that and now we're doing it again I'm gonna say they won't be born though it's not as if we're bringing the embryos to term their lives aren't going to be affected by the there alterations we're making we've already affected them by using them in this role you're mad because I didn't consult you so yeah so we have to go through all of these I guess um We've always got more. That's a real bad. You're mad because I didn't consult you? You're mad because I didn't talk with you about it first. No. Well, yes, I am, but that's not why I feel like this. I understand. It was a big decision. We've invested a lot of time and energy into having kids. I'd probably be upset in your position, but I'd have hoped you'd trust me to make choices for the both of us. Oh, God, you haven't understood what's wrong with this at all. Look at the results we're getting. Um, we've always got more. That's pretty mean, honestly. Um, you're being old fashioned, that's that's extremely mean. Look, I'm gonna go with I understand. Tell him to look at the results, that's not gonna go over very well. I understand. It's not the fact that we're engineering human embryos. It's that there are embryos. I spent two years weaponizing children. The fact that they were destined, doomed to a purpose. It's one thing to have your life affected by a quirk of genetics, but when you've been deliberately altered before birth to fit a role. I'd hoped that I'd escaped it, but seeing it with our own kids, it's just... I understand, Charlie. I'll talk to Dr. Vargas about it. He won't be happy. It sounds like he was counting on this. He'll just have to deal with it. Well, at least we made a nice apology. I'm gonna guess that Baxter is not happy about that. Oh, you're at... We're at the Xanadu Air Freight place. This is where the Mind Jacker is. I don't remember why... Are we supposed to... I forget what we're doing here. <laughs> with, uh... With Mandala. An aerostat is tethered to the landing field. Through the fence, you can see dock workers loading crates of cargo. Through the window, you see a man who looks too well-armed to be working at a front desk. Closer than that is his mug of coffee. Um, can I take his coffee through the window? Is this where uh, Jahilia, the, the people are set up? Is that what we're here for, to work with them? That aircon's putting out a lot of heat. Must be working pretty hard in this weather. Santa do at the door, the bulletins. They look a little bashed up. Through the damage, you can make out an itinerary, some long expired special offers, and a message where someone's hacked the display to display rude hack the text to display rude ASCII drawings. Alright, that's the only thing we could do here, huh? The door leads into the terminal. So Hold on, the previous, the whole previous, uh, scenario, the toilet cleaner wasn't used for anything at all? We saw the injector, we saw the crowbar, we saw our wetware, and an access to trance. It's a warm night with all that armor, it's no wonder he needs aircon. They're not very worldly. You're pretty sure that this man is much more imposing than someone who'd normally be working at the desk at an air freight firm. A painting of a turn-of-the-century antique fighter jet from the days when they still used human pilots for their role. A map of the world showing destinations serviced by Xanadu Air Freight, or at least they used to be. The reception office's uh, terminal... The hidden tabs for online poker suggest something about the staff's work ethic. I mean, they weren't very well hidden if you could just spot them, huh? Hello? We're closed. Yeah, but... But... Can I just... No, go away. You don't even... No, it's too hot to argue. Apparently the man at his desk is making up for the chill of the hot of the air conditioner with a mug of something hot. 
too hot to argue, yet you're... Yet you're drinking coffee? I'll take that hey, mug. That's off my coffee. What if I put some wetware in your coffee, dude? The wetware won't form... Alright, what if I inject your coffee? Hey, that's off my coffee. Real subtle. <laughs> yeah, real subtle. Okay, what if I, uh, wetware is terminal? Hey, man, for all. But where the map? The wetware won't form a connection. But where the air conditioner? Hey, Can I wetware the air conditioner from the outside? Eh, probably not. The wetware won't... The screen's probably not connected into the higher systems. I'd better save my wetware for more important target. Alright. That aircon's putting... A I mean, didn't I? I tried the bottom aircon, but not the top aircon. The wetware won't. That aircon's putting out a. All right. What am I missing? Can I just go in the door? I mean, it probably will be very mad if I try. Hey, authorized personnel only. What am I even doing here? I've forgotten. Can I just go into trance? There's a connection. There's, a uh, oh, there's Jahilia. So, uh, we're, we're here to be used as a, as, as a relay for her, is that it? Salam, Mandela. Hi. Salikum salam to you too. Hey, um, I'm on site, the signal. Why are they after me? Do you have any idea why they're after me? We've suspicions that it's related to your unusually high sync rate. I don't think I've seen a mind-machine interface work so fast outside of a laboratory. Aha! So you're a scientist. I thought it was considered poor netiquette to pry into one's outside life. I, uh, yeah, sorry. Just that this isn't the kind of thing I normally get into. You feel unsafe and believe that a greater comprehension would alleviate it. I understand perfectly. All you need to know about me is that I'm on your side, Mandala. Let me go ahead and just, I mean, I'm not, I don't have a grasp of Arabic, so my sincere apologies if my, uh, my former response to Salam was incorrect. I tried to be, uh, I tried to be, be humble and, and inclusive about it, but I could just been incredibly wrong on how to how to respond to that so hopefully not but maybe you said cell wasn't out to get me so why was a cell agent trying to blow me up if he's acting independently of cell it means one of two things something about your death would benefit him or he is being compelled to act in such a way he's definitely I being compelled too if we can stop whoever's behind this first then it means he's got no reason to come after me let us hope I can sense the signal you've mentioned. I've got a visual representation in my trance hub. Good. You'll know how close you are to your goal. If they're trying to hide, why are they broadcasting like this? Like much of hacking, we must look for mistakes our target makes. What you sense is not intentional on their part. Oh, so it's seepage? Like inter-system connections they haven't noticed? Precisely. Many of their own devices communicate wirelessly. Their attempt at security involves limiting the range. They therefore avoid attacks from the net at large. But if you can get a relay close enough, then we may study their signal as though we were by your side. All right, well, I'm on site. I'm finally at the site. You were right. I can feel the connection. That is good to hear. You managed to avoid detection in your journey? Yeah, nobody noticed me. Just some thrall wandering the southwest city. Uh, yeah, what am I doing here, by the way? What is it you need me to do here? We have the ID for their system, but are unable to access it. You must get close enough to it to act as a relay point. Then your tech teams break into it and find out what their plans are? Exactly. Um, what will you do when I'm there? What is your breaching team going to do? When I reach the systems, I mean. We aim to rip their memory drives. Cloning them onto another system allows us to perform more destructive analytics. Plus, the process would wreck their whole system as well. Better hope they haven't got any people connected to the system. Anyone wired is going to find their brains fried and stored in a mem capsule. Of course, before this takes place, we will secure a back door to the system. That way, we will not depend on you as a relay. You will therefore be able to escape once this has been accomplished. 
All right, so um, this place is an aerodrome. So, the people trying to kill me are working out of an old aerodrome? Quite so. This air freight business collapsed last year. We suspect it was bought up as a front for this criminal enterprise. They're storing their data systems in the aerostat? Why don't they just split it up and hide it in the trance? Physical security is as much a concern for admins as system integrity. If they suspect someone of getting too close... They can just take off. Huh. All right, I'm done. I'll get back to you. Good luck. There's the connection. Connection strength. It's already been enabled. The hunter seeker algorithm will do all the hard work finding its way into the network at the airfield. Well, I still have this currency. I have no idea why I have it. Anything in my <laughs> mailbox? Nope. Anything in the news? Something about a uh, war between India, China, and Pakistan. We have the Neon Ankh. A little background about me, like in uh, coll early college, high school time, like I... I did wear an Ankh necklace. I think it was uh, was supposed to be from uh, Vampire the Masquerade, but wasn't really super familiar with Vampire the Masquerade, to be honest with you. I just thought it was cool. Can I bonk him over there with a the crowbar? Sure, if I feel like getting myself shot. Can I uh, crowbar the door open? Actually, I bet I crowbar the, uh, can I crowbar the, the air conditioner from the other side. Well, he's not going to like that, is he? Oh, damn it. Why did it have to break tonight? Vapors from the guard's coffee is carried by the breeze into the warm night of air. Okay, so he's opened the window so he can get a breeze. Now I can inject something into his coffee. Taking care to ensure the guard doesn't see you, squeeze a few drops of tranquilizer from the injector into the coffee. Wasn't aware that I had tranquilizer. Probably should have uh, saw the description of the injector first. Before I just go and inject it into someone's coffee. And he's it. He's, got, he's out. Hopefully we got the, the dosage correct and he's not completely dead. Lightweight. Alright, what do we got? Hello. Guess that tranquilizer did its job. Nothing on him. Okay. Um. Well, we can wet wear the terminal now. I don't need to hack it. He didn't log out. Okay. Well, never mind. He didn't log out. Components computer. Components aerostat. Components. What is cargo? Okay. So these are containers. Wet wear. Wet wear. What is this? Oh, we can change the weight. It's it's very heavy. Is there something in particular we're looking for? Ammunition, frozen meat products, components, firearms, microbial sprays, bolts, cobalt, books and literature, mandala beware. Excuse me? Hey, look, it's the T-H-E foods. Mandala beware, what's that all about? Why does it say Mandala Beware? Um, are the guys we're working with not the greatest guys? Can I... Well, the only thing I see is revert from backup. Don't know why we did that, but we did that. Oh, that's probably because we changed some weight. That's probably resetting the weight. Yeah. What What are we doing with the weight? Don't know the password to get in the door. I can't make that. 
Hey, what's what's the password to get in the door? Lightweight. I could just crowbar it open, right? <laughs> Though the aircon succumbed to your strength, it doesn't look like you can overcome this door with it. The number of magnetic sensors around it suggests that an attempt to pry it open would be met with several alarms. Um, why does one of them say Mandala Beware, by the way? Salam, Mandala. Hi. Remind me, what am I doing here? Just getting close enough to their main server. We suspect it to be based on the aerostat. Then, when I'm near enough to it, we shall use your wiring. Okay, I think I... Alright, maybe... I'll get back. Good luck. Can I, can I leave trance, please? So this uh, door requires a code. I mean, it looks like it's five digits long. Nothing in the code. I mean, I got E29 is Mandala Beware. But uh, E29 is not a five digit code. Let me look back through components, computer, components, aerostat, automobile, synthetics, MREs, red, blue, other, seed growth, firearms, ammunition, antimicrobial spray, frozen meat products, beverages, uh, books, holographic memory blocks, electrical battery, transplant materials, tungsten, cobalt, petroleum, narkeen, whatever, wiring, 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 first aid. Etc. 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 The lax DDI. What, what am I doing here, though? What was I? Hello. Guess that trank. Nah, I don't want it now that I know it's in it. Terminal. Like, are you sure I can't hack the terminal? Can I hack the door? As you might, you can't find any systems on it. That appear new enough to accept a wetware bond. That'd make their security system at least, hmm, 20 years old, you reckon? What am I doing here? I need to get past this door, obviously, to get to the aerostat. I can't reach it from here. Well, of course you can't reach it from here. I wasn't asking you to reach it from here. And again, I can't wetware the the bullets. The screen's probably not connected. I'd better save my wetware. Hmm. I mean, there's clearly something with this terminal, but I just don't know what I'm looking for. Let's see. So, Mandala Beware. That's what B. That's E99. Like, if I put this to net weight 500 kilograms. And revert from backup just replaces it, yeah. What is the... What is with the net weight? I don't understand what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, it's E99, so what if I set this to 99? I mean, that's real dumb. And they wouldn't want me to, like, go in and just, like, change everything. So, I don't know what I'm doing. A little concerned about Mandala Beware. We'll make the computer components weigh 500 kilograms. Doesn't actually impact the aerostat outside, does it? It absolutely does not. Well, um, since we can't go anywhere else and this episode has been about half an hour, a little over, I guess this is where we call this episode. So thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again next time.